Cruise news time. Well, a, a sad story coming out of Panama where a gangway has collapsed and cruisers have been injured. We had a really big day for Royal Caribbean yesterday and especially fans of cruising in Texas. Uh, MSC, a record-breaking month, and there's another cruise line that's getting faster internet. Who will it be? Cruise news and my views. Let's talk about it. Hey, 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 what's up, everybody? Welcome to La Lido Loca. I'm your host, Tony, here with the latest cruise news and views. Well, for your brain. How about that? We'll tickle your brain with the show today. Uh, it is Thursday, the 10th of November, 2022, and I'm here on the nature coast of Florida, just north of Tampa, and we're working through the remnants of Tropical Storm Nicole. She made landfall in Florida, made her way across the state, and uh, here's a little clip of what it looks like out in my backyard. raining it's overcast it's dark you can hear the wind but the wind is not really blowing heavily so i think we've probably missed the worst of this storm uh, it should clear out over the next day or so the storm did impact a lot of cruises uh, delayed some cruises uh, had cruises changing itinerary hopefully by early saturday everything will be lining up again uh, people will be able to get on the cruise ships that they need to get on itineraries will be straightened out and uh, florida will be free and clear from this storm and we'll have to wait and see if there's any storms for the rest of the season were you impacted by nicole uh, leave a comment below let me quickly touch on a story i talked about yesterday i talked about a delay in the prima plus cruise ships coming from ncl i shared a report that stated that there would not be any new prima plus cruise ships out in 2024 instead they would double up in 2026 and that left the question what does that mean for the ncl viva i don't think anything has changed with the NCL Viva. She is scheduled to be delivered in 2023. I think that is true. So we will have the NCL Prima and the NCL Viva in service. Then they'll skip a new ship in 2024 and get back on schedule in 2025, two in 2026, and one in 2027 to bring us to six cruise ships in the Prima Plus class. So uh, sorry for any confusion on that. That takes us to our next cruise news story. There has been a gangway collapse on a major cruise ship in Panama. We're talking about the NCL Encore. The gangway has collapsed where it was docked. This happened on Tuesday, and there were several passengers injured. There has not been a report of the severity of the injury, uh, but this, this happens from time to time. It's, it's a fairly uncommon occurrence. It is more common for people to fall off the gangway opposed to the gangway collapsing, but it has happened in the history of cruising. It's happened with uh, fatalities in the past, and uh, something that you wouldn't expect to happen, there will definitely be an investigation to try to understand why this gangway collapsed and to prevent it from happening uh, happening again. Uh, but hopefully everybody that was injured in that event uh, will recover quickly. That's, uh, that's scary stuff because if you're getting off at the port, we all use the gangway. Um, yeah, wow. Cruise news story number three. Yesterday, a huge, 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 huge day for Royal Caribbean International. A huge day for Texas cruisers. A huge day for the environmental footprint of cruising as the new Royal Caribbean terminal opened in Galveston, Texas. And this terminal is completely powered by solar. Solar, the sun, the Helios, the sun is keeping this thing going. How about that? Uh, this is one of the more environmentally forward cruise terminals, 161,000 plus square feet. And it's the first facility in Texas to get the LEED, the LEED Gold Certification, which is an environmental certification. And well, what's the hubbub, Bob? What's this terminal for? Well, it's for one of the world's largest cruise ships. The Allure of the Seas was on hand yesterday for the opening of the terminal. She will be doing sailings around the Western Caribbean. Uh, for the rest of the summer until next year when the Harmony of the Seas will make its way to Galveston to service that new terminal. I know that Matt from the Royal Caribbean blog was making his way to the terminal opening. Uh, I'm sure there will be some footage and some coverage over there on Royal Caribbean blog on the YouTube channel and also on the website. Uh, yeah, I need to go dig into that, see what kind of footage Matt has. He's going to be on this first sailing of the Allure. So if you want to stay up to date with what's going on there, make sure you check that out. Are you scheduled to make your way through that cruise terminal in Galveston on 
onto the allure anytime soon. Well, uh, are you excited? <laughs> Either way, leave a comment below. Cruise news story number four, super duper exciting. MSC has reported that it has had its strongest, biggest month of bookings ever. In October, they recorded nearly 400,000 bookings for the 2022-2023 season and beyond. And well, that's the most bookings that they have ever had. Why do we care? Why is it important? It's important because it's a great indication that cruising continues to come back in a strong way. The demand for cruising is high. Many people in North America don't even consider MSC as a legit cruise line, uh, one that they've heard that they should skip. Well, again, I've said it before, MSC is coming hard and heavy, not only globally, but in North America, a force to be reckoned with. And while well, now they're really starting to show it in their bookings, 400,000 bookings for MSC in October, the biggest ever in the history of their company. It's good because if MSC's bookings up, you can bet that NCL, Carnival, and Royal Caribbean bookings up also. Congratulations, MSC. Bring it. Uh, the competition is good for the cruise industry. Uh, can't wait to see what you guys do next. And speaking about competition, there's a cruise line out there recognizing that if one cruise line has the fastest internet at sea, well, they might be at a disadvantage. We've been talking over the last few months about the appearance of the Starlink internet service on cruise ships. Uh, first and notably, we heard about it on Royal Caribbean cruise ships. Then we saw Hertha Gruden, the cruise line in Norway, come out and say that they would be rolling out Starlink link on all of their ships, possibly saying they would get it done before Royal had it on all of their ships, which they have less ships, which might be an easier task. We've even seen some indication the Carnival Cruise Line is testing out Starlink. And now we have another major player while they're jumping into the Starlink arena. I'm going to tell you exactly who that is if you haven't figured it out yet. But before I get there, let me quickly invite you to subscribe. If you like staying up to date with everything that's going on in cruising, boom, boom, please consider subscribing with the notification bell on. That way you don't miss out on any of these episodes. Thank you in advance. Uh, it's NCL. There has been sightings of Starlink equipment on the NCL breakaway. The sighting was reported by an anonymous source to several of the major cruise blogs out there. And so it'll be interesting if we get a final confirmation from Norwegian. But yeah, these Starlink dishes are very recognizable and it would certainly make sense that Norwegian Cruise Line would not want to fall behind the other major players uh, if the fastest internet at sea is the Starlink offering. I, I love, I love seeing these companies Companies compete with each other. I like the idea that they're trying to keep all things equal and then find some other way to differentiate. And please recognize there are people out there that will be making their choice based on the speed of internet or it'll be one of the components of their choice. And so it, I think it's smart. I think it's smart that the cruise lines are like, oh, we all need a level playing field when it comes to the internet because uh, in this modern paradigm, uh, there will be people making decisions based on internet speed. The fastest internet I've ever had on a cruise ship though was on the Sky Princess last year. I don't know what they had, but it was the quickest upload and download that I've ever had. I could do videos like nobody's business. Uh, what's the quickest internet you've ever had at sea? Or what ship do you remember being the fastest and when? Leave a comment below. And look, I noticed that last week there's still some confusion about what to do with your cell phone from an airplane mode or Wi-Fi mode on the cruise ship. I did do this video a couple years ago, and I think it's still applicable. It talks about exactly those things. Should you go into airplane mode? How do you access the ship's Wi-Fi? Th that kind of thing. Make sure you check out this video next. This is Tony for La Lido Loca, and until the next time, we'll see you on the Lido. Bye.